Chapter 11 is called The Threadmaster Cometh. When Despero came to, he heard the drum. His father was beating a rhythm that had much more boom and much less tat. Together, the drum produced an ominous sound that went something like this. Boom, 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 tat. Boom, 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 tat. Make way for the thread, cried a mouse who was pushing a wooden spool of red thread through the crowd. Make way for the thread. Boom, 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 tat, went the drum. To the dungeon, shouted the mice. Despero lay on his back, blinking his eyes. How, he wondered, had things gone so terribly wrong? Wasn't it a good thing to love? In the story in the book, love was a very good thing. Because the knight loved the fair maiden, he was able to rescue her. They lived happily ever after. It said so in the book. They were the last words on the page, happily ever after. Despero was certain that he had read exactly those words time and time again. Lying on the floor with the drum beating and the mice shouting and the threadmaster calling out, Make way! Make way! Despero had a sudden, chilling thought. Had some other mouse eaten the words that spoke the truth? Did the knight and the fair maiden really not live happily ever after? Readers... Do you believe that there is such a thing as happily ever after? Or, like Despero, have you too begun to question the possibility of happy endings? Happily ever after, whispered Despero, happily ever after. He said again as the spool of thread came to a stop beside him. The thread, the thread, the thread, murmured the mice. I'm sorry, said the mouse behind the spool, but I have to ask you to stand up. I have to do my job. Despero got slowly to his feet. On your hind legs, please, said the threadmaster. It's the rules. Despero stood on his hind legs. Thank ya, said the mouse. I appreciate it. While Despero watched, the threadmaster unwound a length of red thread from the spool and tied a loop. Just enough for the neck, muttered the mouse. No more, no less. That's what the last threadmaster taught me. Enough thread for the neck. He looked up at Despero and then back down at the loop of thread. And you, my friend, have a small neck. The threadmaster raised his arms and put them around Despero's neck. He leaned in close and Despero smelled celery. He could feel the threadmaster's breath in his ear as he worked at tightening the thread. Is she beautiful? The threadmaster whispered. What? said Despero. Shh! Is the princess beautiful? The princess P? Yes. She is lovely beyond all imagining, said Despero. Just right, the threadmaster said. He drew back. He nodded his head. Oh, lovely princess, just so like a fairy tale. And you love her as a knight loves a maiden. You love her with a courtly love, a love that is based on bravery and courtesy and honor and devotion. Just so. How do you know that, Despero said. H how do you know about fairy tales? Shh. The mouse leaned in close, and Despero smelled celery again, green and alive. Be brave, friend, whispered the threadmaster. Be brave for the princess. And then he stepped back and turned and shouted, Fellow mice, the thread has been tied. The thread has been knotted. A roar of approval went up from the crowd. Despero squared his shoulders. He had made a decision. He would do as the Threadmaster had suggested. He would be brave for the princess. Even if, readers, could it be true? There was no such thing as happily ever after. And that's the end of the chapter. What was Despero beginning to doubt? He was beginning to doubt that happily ever afters even existed. He thought maybe some other mouse maybe ate those words at the end of the story that he had read in the library. And how was he feeling? Yeah, he was feeling very scared. But what did the Threadmaster tell him? That he had to be brave for the princess. And so how did Despero feel at the end of the chapter? Yeah, he started to feel brave, and we know because he squared his shoulders and said to himself that he would be brave for the princess. Would you be brave in a situation like this? I don't know. 
sounds pretty scary. All right, let's keep reading. 